All right, Kendall, I cannot stall any longer. I cannot stall any longer. Kendall Carver's coming, and she's going to be sharing her story with you guys today. We've, we've, yes, welcome her. Thank you. Make a run for it. <laughs> and um, we've kind of been following along with her in her journey this last year or so, and so she's going to share more about that um, with you guys today. And... Um, Kendall, you uh, you had a big announcement on Facebook this yes. past week. Do you want to share that with everybody while I'm standing yes. here before I take the kids? Yeah, before you take the kids. Before I take the kids? Yes. What, what, that announcement was? That I am cancer-free. Yes. <laughs> to God be the glory of that. And um, so I am going to say, kids, guess what? You have a special very special person who's going to be leading you today, and that is me. <laughs> so, I'm going to let Kendall take it away, and kids, y'all meet me at the back double doors for kids time, okay? Give them a hand as they go. them get out before I start. It's not near as intimidating when the kids go out because they take up a lot of seats. So it looks a lot more, yeah, this, this is doable. This is doable. <laughs> and I've got my phone. I'm sorry if this is not professional. Can't do it on paper, so we've got my phone. So. <laughs> hey, Depot Church. I'm Kendall Carver. <laughs> and I want to tell you about the goodness of God through my story. I thought I was going to make it a lot further than that, guys. I really did. I really did. <laughs> I'm recently 29 years old. I'm a wife and a mom to a three-year-old little girl named Evie Gray. My life was exactly how I pictured it. But then a few weeks shy of my 28th birthday, I was told the words no one ever wants to hear. We think you have a form of blood cancer, a type of leukemia. We are so sorry. I was 20 weeks pregnant with my second daughter. What? <laughs> Chris and I had just gotten home from a little roofing convention slash baby moon when I was having some pain under my ribs. We didn't think too much about it, but decided to get it checked out. And Michael talked about this last week. This was God's mercy for me. If I wasn't pregnant, we wouldn't have gotten this checked out, and I can certainly say I wouldn't be here. After multiple rounds of blood work, an ambulance ride to downtown Charlotte, a really long visit in the ER, and finally a bone marrow biopsy, I received my diagnosis. T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Try saying that three times fast. <laughs> a diagnosis that would change my life so swiftly, I didn't even have a chance to breathe. The first few days in the hospital were a whirlwind. Test upon test, a procedure called leukapheresis, and this has to be the craziest procedure I've had done in my life. <laughs> I had a catheter in my neck. Chris will tell you. It, I couldn't even move. Like, I couldn't even look whenever anybody came into the room. Um, but it was hooked up to a machine that removed excess white blood cells from my body that lasted for hours. It, it was just crazy. <laughs> they did baby monitoring, and we got bad news after bad news. And then it really came. more words I wish that nobody has to hear. The treatment you will need to survive, your baby will not. We lost our sweet baby girl on June 29th, just four days after learning of my diagnosis, and just days after we had decided on her sweet name. Eleanor May 
Carpenter. My lifesaver. I truly believe that God gave me this baby, not for me to love here on earth, but to save my life. Mercy. He is so merciful. As hard as it is to see sometimes, he is. He can't be anything but. Now, I don't recall a lot of this week, but this was my life now. It honestly felt like it was in shambles, but I had to be strong for the little girl that I has still had. And I knew that the only way to get through this was with God. So we did. Everything. Every decision made. Every question asked and every prayer answered, his hand was in. We prayed like we've never prayed before, and he moved like I've never seen him move before. I started treatment the day after we lost Ellie. That's just hard to even believe. Um, This is my new normal, and it looked like chemo multiple times a week, sometimes four and five days a week. I spent my birthday last year in the hospital, And praise God, I had a normal birthday this year with my family. Again, that's mercy. The chemo that I was being given eventually started creating more issues than it was helping. I had some pretty bad side effects that landed me in a wheelchair for a period of time. You know, y'all, I was 28 years old in a wheelchair. That's nothing that anybody can see their life turning into, but it was. I developed a neuropathy in my feet and hands. I still have a little bit in my feet, so I'm still not driving right now. If y'all see me behind the wheel, y'all might want to get out of the way. <laughs> um, the neuropathy at its worst extended to my, um, up to my knees, and that's why I was in a wheelchair. It made it very difficult for me to walk unassisted. And that's when they started recommending a bone marrow transplant. Now, if I'm being honest, I was scared to death. I had heard numbers and statistics that were less than promising. My own doctor said, there's a chance that you don't make it, but this is the only way to fully cure you. We met with doctors at Duke, and they seemed to confirm those things, those fears. We were hoping to keep this as our last option. I wanted to keep doing it, what we were doing, if at all possible. And then we got results back saying that my cancer was gone. We celebrated. Now, although my cancer was gone, the kind of cancer I had had to be treated for a very long time because it's so persistent. But we were happy because we didn't have to go down that route. But the very next week, my doctor told me that they sent off for an even more in-depth test, and it showed that I did still have cancer cells remaining. Although looking back now, this was a blessing. I was crushed at the time. I mean, we were just celebrating, so happy that we could continue on a maintenance plan. It was almost a comfort zone, and I know that that sounds weird, chemotherapy being a comfort zone, but that meant that I didn't have to quite literally risk my life to save it. And I had a two-year-old at the time. I'd already lost so much, I felt like my family couldn't lose me too. But isn't that how it is with God? He doesn't want us to stay in our comfort zones. We don't grow there. So he opened up doors for us to meet with Levine's Cancer Institute during a break in treatment. Again, God had his hand in this because y'all all know how easy it is to get in somewhere in a time frame. It just doesn't happen. So we knew that that was God. Now, I've never come to the altar But the Sunday before our appointment with Levine's, I felt him nudging me. You can go. So I went. I walked up to the front with tear-filled eyes, and I told Dusty I was so anxious for our appointment. And he prayed over me and for me. And then I felt a peace so undeniable. At our consultation appointment with Levine's, my new doctor reassured me that all the things that I heard weren't true looking up. I was still scared, but I trusted that this was the best course of action for me. If we continued doing chemo, I would have long-term side effects from it, and I could relapse. And with my cancer, a relapse was very likely, and it wouldn't be good. 
and they likely couldn't get me back to the point of getting to a bone marrow transplant. But as a mom, your biggest fear is leaving your baby without you. And that was my fear, that if something didn't go according to plan, I might not make it. It's true fear, but yet peace. I wish I could explain it. It's only a piece that he can give you. After our initial consultation with Levine's and them taking literally all the blood that I had in my body, it felt like. I mean, they took 20 vials of blood. I counted them. <laughs> they started the process of trying to find my donor. Now, not only did I have one match, and that's a big deal itself, to have one person to match with you. I had multiple matches. What an answered prayer. They were able to hand select the best possible donor for me. Take a second to get some water, not choke on it. Okay. While we were going over the paperwork for my consent for transplant, I noticed that the donor had to reveal information if it was necessary for my medical team and myself to know about. I saw that they went out of the country once, no big deal. But what stuck out a little bit more to me was that they claimed to have gotten a tattoo in an unlicensed parlor a couple years ago. <laughs> now, don't think I didn't ask questions about this. I made sure that my donor's living room tattoo was not going to pop up on me at some point. <laughs> that was really the last thing I needed, y'all. Like, no regrets, something like that, just popping up on me one day. That's all I needed. <laughs> to this day, I still don't know who my donor is. Um, for the first year, we can both send anonymous letters to each other, and then after that point, if we both agree to it, we can talk, contact each other. I'm so thankful for this person and their willingness to go through what they went through, blood work, tests, injections, and then a six-hour collection process for a stranger. To save someone else's life that they've never met. I just pray that God has blessed that person. I know he has. And I pray that I'll be able to thank them in person one day. I hope that they let me meet them and I can see their tattoo, get all, you know. <laughs> Won't that be wild? <laughs> Throughout this whole process, I've talked to God a lot. I knew that he was working out all the details for me. I knew that he went ahead of me and he was already there. It was so evident in every single detail. My transplant was scheduled for March 21st. This is my grandmother's birthday, and this is who Evie is named after. That date was not a coincidence. Nothing is a coincidence with God. My transplant lasted 22 minutes. It was very anticlimactic. There was no surgery, no downtime, just me hooked up to the IV bag. And it was a fresh donation, which means it wasn't frozen, it didn't have all the preservatives in it, and to that is what I credit a lot of my success to. It was literally just a small bag, like literally this size bag of stem cells. However, I received five billion new cells. It's almost like I was redeemed, literally a new person. I mean, I have new DNA now, y'all. Chris jokes that I could commit a crime <laughs> and get away with it because I don't think my fingerprints match my DNA now. <laughs> that is not on my radar, but just, you know, just keep that in mind. <laughs> but what didn't change, my DNA changed, but what didn't change was my trust in the Lord to bring me through this trial. And when you have a transplant, you have milestones that are very important. 100 days being the biggest. This date was June 29th, Ellie's heavenly birthday. I'm so thankful that we were able to celebrate this milestone and honor our sweet girl. And like I said earlier, we got the news this past week that I'm cancer free and that my donor cells are operating at 100%. It's almost like it's come full circle. 
God perfectly orchestrated this part of my story, and he did it with those dates so that I knew that it was him, that he was there and he was in control. This one's a little tough. <laughs> They've told us that Evie will likely be our only child, that the chemo I received during the months leading up to the transplant, and especially the chemo that I had the week of the transplant that wiped out my whole immune system would affect my fertility. I went from having a daughter and being pregnant with my second to having an only child. Now don't get me wrong, I'm so thankful for my life and the family that I have. I prayed for the sweet family that I have. And the human in me remembers what was lost and what could have been. Now I know the power of prayer and I know that if it's God's will, it can't be stopped. So I'm not sure what our future family looks like, but I know he works miracles because I'm living proof of it. And I know that he knows the desires of our heart because he places those desires in our hearts. And my desire to have a bigger family might come to, fr to fruition, but it might not, or it might not be the way that I picture it. But he has a plan, a perfect plan. And anything that I picture for myself is far less than what he has in store for me. Now, before I close up, and I know this is probably not the longest sermon y'all have been to. Y'all can get to your lunch spots quicker than all the, the other Baptists and the Pentecostals. But before I close up, and while I've got a mic on, I want to publicly take the time to thank a few people. My parents, Mom and Dad, you've gone above and beyond for us. You opened up your home for us and took care of us during our hardest days. We can never thank you enough. I love you. To my brother, this was harder on him than he let on. <laughs> and I'm just so thankful that he's my best friend and my big brother. I love you. <laughs> to my father-in-law, who called me at least once a week to check on me and tell me who all had asked about me and who was praying for me. <laughs> I love you. Chris's mom and sisters for coordinating schedules with my parents for who would keep Evie what day while we had appointments. That was a big weight off of our shoulder. Thank you. And to all of our family and friends for the love and support you've shown us. It's completely blown us away. And Chris, I really don't even have the words. You've been my rock through this entire journey, and you've literally shown what it's like to honor your vows that you made six years ago. <laughs> and you could probably recite every single thing that any doctor or nurse has told me in this past year. I know that you could word for word. You've been there for it all. And God knew what he was doing when he placed you in my life. I've never felt more loved and cared for. And you're just the best. And I love you more than you could ever know. And thank you, Depot Church, for allowing me to share my story. But thank you even more for loving me and my family the way that you have. You've taken a lot of weight off of mine and Chris's shoulder during my fight. From dinner plans to medical bills, and for the best cookies that I think I've ever had, Kayla Cook. <laughs> and for that, I'm forever grateful. I love you, Depot Church. And I'm so blessed to be a part of this community that loves its people so well. Thank you. I've leaned on God more during this time than I ever have. He's been with me from the start. I put my trust in him and let everything else fall into place. I hope that you know him. I hope you know how good he is, even when, even when your circumstances look like mine, similar to mine, even when it's not how you picture your life, even when you can't breathe because whatever it is knocks the wind out of you. He's there. He is so near and he is always good. I hope you know how much he wants to have a relationship with you. 
I saw a quote this week that said, God will let you walk into an uncomfortable situation where all you can do is rely on him. Don't be anxious. He's about to show you he is faithful. He is faithful. He's worth trusting. He's worth seeking. He's better than we could even hope. Now I'd like to close with a prayer. I don't know if the band's coming up or I I don't know. (laughs) Somebody tell Dusty. (laughs) So if you guys would bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for being faithful to your people, for loving your children. I pray that through my story, people might come closer to you. Because my story isn't about me. It's about you. I pray that people would see you through me. That through every trial and tribulation, you would get the glory, God. Thank you for what you've done in my life. And thank you for this church that I'm a part of. I ask that you continue to bless it and its people, Lord. And that every person who encounters someone from Depot Church would ultimately see you and want to know you better. It's in your name I pray. Amen. fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God I've known you.